welcome back let us discuss about the next driving force for digital transformation the big data analytics its characteristics data repositories components of big data analytics and so on big data refers to the large diverse set of information that grows at ever increasing rates it encompasses the volume of information the velocity or speed at which it is created and collected and the variety of or the scope of the data points being covered big data is a combination of structured semi-structured and unstructured data collected by organization that can be mined for information and used in machine learning projects predictive modeling and other advanced analytics applications. Big data is a field that allows us with the ways to analyze and systematically extract information or deal with data sets that are too large or complex to be dealt by any traditional data processing application software. Big data is extremely large data sets that may be analyzed computationally to reveal patterns, trends, and associations, especially relating to human behavior and interactions. Much of IT investment is going towards managing and maintaining big data these days. Why is big data important? The importance of big data doesn't revolve around how much data you have, rather what you do with it is really matters. You can take data from any source and analyze it to find answers that enable you to do cost reductions, time reductions, new product development and optimized offerings or even for making smart decision making, right? When you combine big data with high powered analytics, you can accomplish business related tasks such as determining root causes of failures, issues and defects in near real time generating coupons at the point of sale based on customers' buying habits, recalculating entire risk portfolios in minutes, detecting fraudulent behaviors before it affects your organization. So what are those characteristics of big data? Number one, volume. The name big data itself is related to a size which is enormous. Size of data plays a very crucial role in determining the value out of data. Also, whether a particular data can be actually be considered as a big data or not is really dependent upon the volume of data. Hence, volume is one of the characteristics which needs to be considered while dealing with big data. Two, variety. The next aspect of big data is variety. Variety is nothing but heterogeneous sources and the nature of data, both structured and unstructured. During earlier days, spreadsheet and databases were the only sources of data considered by most of the applications. Nowadays, data in the form of emails, photos, videos, monitoring devices, PDF, audio, etc are also being considered in the analysis of applications. This variety of unstructured data poses certain issues for storage, mining, and analyzing the data. Third, velocity. The term velocity refers to the speed of generation of data, how fast the data is generated and processed to meet the demands determines real potential in the data. Big data velocity deal with the speed speed at which data flows in from sources like business processes, application logs, networks and social media sites, sensors, mobile devices, etc. etc. The flow of data is massive and continuous. Fourth, variability. This refers to the inconsistency which can be shown by data at times, thus hampering the process of being able to handle and manage the data effectively. Fifth, veracity in general is 
how accurate or truthful a data set may be. In the context of big data, however, it takes on a bit more meaning. More specifically, when it comes to accuracy of big data, it is not just the quality of the data itself, but how trustworthy the data source, type and processing of it. Removing things like bias, abnormalities, inconsistencies, duplication and volatility are just few aspects of the factor into improving the accuracy of big data. Sixth, value. The bulk of data having no value is no good to the company unless you turn it into something useful. Data in itself is of no use or important, but it needs to be converted into something valuable to extract information out of it. Hence, you can state that value is the most important V among all of these. Sheer volume of data being collected by business today goes beyond and what traditional databases can handle, giving rise to a series of different data repositories, relational databases, data warehouses, data lakes, data marts, and operational data stores. This can be confusing for a data architect trying to decide whether to store the data due to the nuisance present in each of these data stores. Now let us talk about the main two data repositories which are commonly used. A data warehouse is a central repository of integrated data that is gathered from multiple different sources. It stores current and historical data in a structured format it is designed for query and analysis to support the decision-making process of an organization. For example, a data warehouse may contain current and historical sales data that is used for generating trend reports for sales comparisons. A data lake, on the other hand, is a collection of structured and unstructured data sets that are stored as exact or near exact copies of the source formats. The data lake architecture is a store everything approach to big data. Unlike conventional data warehouses, you do not really classify the data when it is stored in the repository as the value of the data may not be clear at that outset. The data is also not arranged as per specific schema and is just stored using an object-based storage architecture. A stack for big data systems has emerged, comprising layers of storage, map reduce, and query, generally called as MAC, S-M-A-Q. SMAC systems are typically open source, distributed, and run on commodity hardware. Talking about storage, a foundational layer, as you see on the screen, storage system consists of multiple nodes collectively called a cluster, a storage system in the SMAC stack is based on either a proprietary or an open source distributed file system, such as Hadoop Distributed File System or HDFS. Talking about the MapReduce, it is an intermediate layer in the stack. MapReduce is the driving force behind most big data processing solutions. MapReduce is created by Google to create a web page index. MapReduce framework has become the most massive and data processing plan today. MapReduce requires storage from which to fetch data and in which to store the results of the computation. The data expected by MapReduce is not relational data as used by pretty much all the conventional databases. Instead, data is consumed in chunks which are then divided among nodes and fed to the map phase as a key value pair. This data does not require a schema and may be unstructured. However, the data must be available in a distributed fashion to serve each processing node. The key to MapReduce is to divide a query on the data collection and execute it in parallel on multiple nodes. This distributed pattern solves the problem that 
data is too large to be stored on a single machine. Hadoop is the main open source MapReduce implementation, by the way. MapReduce implementation of NoSQL database. It works in two phases, namely Map and Reduce, as the name suggests. The Map function processes the chunk in parallel manner and transforms them into multiple smaller intermediate data sets, as you see on the screen on the right side, different colors, right? The reduce function condenses the intermediate results and reduces them to a summarized data set, which is the wanted end result. Last query layer typically implements a NoSQL database for storing, retrieving, and processing data. It also provides a user-friendly platform for analytics and reporting. Query layer typically offer features that handle not only the specification of the computation, but the loading and saving of data and the orchestration of the processing on the MapReduce cluster. Thanks for watching and see you again in the next video talking about Internet of Things.